soul placed in the body of an unborn child. A great deal of work that goes on with the living is done by men and women who work constantly and all the time to guide the living, to see to it that after death the other body is taken back to the right rest plane, where that particular person belongs, and where the greatest number of his or her clan or family can be found. This is the best way to ensure some sort of happiness for everyone. However, apart from actual people who work to help the living, as do we, and we also are unseen and unknown to the writer of this book, there are billions upon billions of microbes of all sorts and types, not only on one structure, but on several, totally not unseen, not only to you, but to us also. These specks of life have important work to do. They, programmed, will go off, seek and find, and do whatever they must without cessation, until they begin to break down and get tired. Remember, nothing, nothing at all can last forever. Everything changes constantly. Within the human body itself are millions of these minute specks of life working to help to keep the human body alive, and also in the bodies of animals. Once anybody dies, wherever it might be, and if it is not detected by fond relatives and friends, the body itself releases microbes quite automatically. This is all part of the death process, and these will find their way to a sort of central control system which works for, the, um, for every living planet. This sets up an automated plan for the bringing of the living to their proper resting place. Very often loved ones, long since dead and known to the dying, are sent to help to make the end of their lives easier and less painful and lonely. In birth it acts in much the same way. Once an ovary has successfully mated with a male sperm, the female body emits millions of these unseen microbes which find their way unaided to the right part of the control system. These microbes are different, as are skin cells and scraps of bone tissues for every individual person. The whole way in which the womb works, inducing life, fits into the complex network which creates life for each planet. These microbes are admitted constantly until the right moment for the fusion of the soul or entity has come. Meantime, other microbes programmed in the vast computer work, computer work to find the right soul for each birth. Once this is done, the special microbes will carry the tiny speck, which is all of us without a body, back to the forming embryo in the new host mother. The extraordinary way that the soul then begins to work on the living flesh for both structures is not really fully understood, but work it does to restore the unborn person to life in a body as nearly right for the inner entity as can be achieved with the material available. Only humanity on the living planet can produce and create new life, new bodies, and we hope in the future with new knowledge the living will have greater thought to the sorts of children they will bring into the world. An intelligent look at an ant colony, a beehive, and many other forms of life similar will help to show the reader that nature reproduces itself over and over again. Even the human body itself is programmed and full of microbes which must work constantly, each to his special task, to keep the body functioning from the brain, which is the powerhouse of the body. Humanity itself is programmed to a lesser or greater extent, and everybody has his or po or her place in the scheme of things. Only a very few are ever intelligent enough to run a large organization to govern of whatever race they may be. We hope to show in these dictations from the other side, for that is what we are, that how the scheme of things is meant to work, but sadly, rarely does. There you go, done.